Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Rapidis webinar. We'll be diving into the world of business energy and exploring the powerful integration between Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamic 365. I am Sireen Tweery. I am a sales consultant here at Rapidi, and I'm excited to be your host uh, for today. So here with me, my esteemed colleague, Andrea. She's a data integration consultant. And Andrea uh, will guide you through the essential aspects of data integration and the Rapidi Innovative Solution. So let's take a quick look to our agenda today. So we will have an introduction to Rapidi, then we will go uh, to talk about the importance of integration, Rapidi integration solutions. We will uh, tell you about some of our customer testimonials, and we will also explain how you can get started with us. In the end, we will have a Q&A session, so please feel free to write all of your questions in the chat. So I would like to tell you a little bit about our company, who we are and what we do. So at Rapidi, we have over 30 years of data integration experts, uh, expertise, and our journey as data integration experts started back then when Microsoft was still called Navision. It was a smaller group back then, and our CEO, Michael Bach, was part of that group. And Michael is still playing an important role at Rapidi today and uh, offering his expertise and experience to Rapidi's customers. So what sets us apart uh, in Rapidi is our cutting edge cloud technology that requires no programming at all. And also our customer uh, satisfaction as we have a worldwide customers who are uh, giving up uh, uh, as and evaluating as with four to five stars in the app exchange uh, of, um, rating because they are extremely satisfied about our solution. Uh, and uh, the most important thing about Rapidi is that we are offering a flexible, simple, robust and complete solution. So uh, we are not only uh, integrating data, we are integrating success. And now I would like to uh, let you with Andrea, who will let you tell you a little bit more about uh, what we do. So. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we will go into the next section. Um, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please use the chat, add them there, and then at the end, we can review them and we'll try to give you an answer. Now we'll talk about the importance of integration. I think from our point of view, um, we are all about simplifying the entire process. We don't want to make it uh, you know, a very complicated process or just to give you headaches, right? So we really want to make sure that you know, an integration will try to solve some of the current uh, issues that you have. So then the question is, why integrate? So here you have four buckets. Um, and first of all, we have collaboration. Uh, when you have an integration, you are able to activate existing data. And this means that you get a full overview of your uh, customers. And once you have uh, these two, then you are able to enable um, teams to collaborate even better. The second bucket is about efficiency. Of course, we are all um, focused on being efficient. I think that's what we want um, in any company, right? And what an, what an integration will do is that will remove double data entries, right? There will not be any switching between systems. And this means that um, if you remove the first two, then you, you, you eliminate rework, basically. And then in the end, what you actually gain is process automation. Then the third bucket would be quality. Um, of course, through an integration, you get consistent data. Um, and if you have consistent data across the board, then you have data that you can trust. And um, if you have really good data, then you are able to have a, a very good um, um, reporting, right? And then this means that um, it, will, it will give you an increased user adoption. And the last one would be about growth. So you'll have better decision support, which means that you have a better um, customer satisfaction. And in the end, what really matters um, to any company is to sell more and sell faster. So um, here, as you can see, uh, these are the main reasons when it comes to uh, the question, why should you uh, integrate? It will solve, uh, um, let's say, most of the, the current uh, challenges that you have. And of course, it will improve your current processes. 
Next, I think here is important to talk a bit about the integration and why is it important. Um, when you have uh, an integration between two systems, uh, you are able to streamline your business processes. And then what you also get, you get real-time data synchronization. You can have your da data being transferred, flowing from one system to another. Also, it improves decision-making and productivity. Um, then think about it in this way. So you have your end users who can focus on other tasks, right? You can let the systems to talk to each other, uh, transfer all the data in real time, and then um, the users will be able to uh, work on tasks that are really important. Of, and of course, last but not least, it reduces or eliminates data silos, manual processes, and communication gaps. So here, uh, once you have an integration between two systems, um, you can definitely um, uh, re remove manual processes and also communication gaps. So then uh, you will not need users to go into the systems, um, type in all the data that you need, and then do the same thing in the other system. That's just a lot of manual work. And when you have a lot of manual work, then uh, you'll have mistakes, right? Because people make mistakes, that's normal. But then when you have two systems talking to each other, then you reduce, if not eliminate that part. And then you can make sure that the data that you are transferring is cons consistent and reliable. I think when it comes to integrations in general, you integrate to elevate. Um, so the idea is to uh, um, actually unify your systems, put them together, and this will actually ensure your success as a company. So if your systems are able to talk to each other and the communication is good in the sense that data is transferred without any issues from one point to another, then you are good to go. So this means that everything will be um, um, into your systems, up to date, and of course it will be correct. Then the next section is about rapid data integration solutions. So again, as I mentioned before, we do we do not want to uh, overcomplicate things when it comes to integrations in general. We want to make sure that integrations can be made easy, right? We want to make sure that that's something that's approachable um, to a lot of uh, users. So when it comes to Rapidi, Rapidi is an innovative IPaaS. So we do focus on simplicity. So simplicity refers to our design, installation, and use. And also it's a cloud integration system that actually has pre-configured templates. So these templates will allow you to quickly integrate various systems. When you use the templates, you actually um, uh, you are able to use um, those specific mappings that have been built based on uh, best practices, recommendations, and feedback from customers. So you will use the, uh, let's say, the result of all that work, and, and then you can apply it on your specific integration. And of course, we do have extensive expertise in integrating Dynamics ERPs, Salesforce, but we also extend everything to, um, you know, uh, other systems. Our work is not limited to the dynamics world, so to speak. And speaking of that, here we have Rapidi's most common endpoints. Of course, we do focus on Dynamics 365 ERPs and Salesforce integrations, uh, but our work is not limited to that. We can definitely work on uh, other types of integrations with other systems. We can work on integrating SQL databases, Oracle databases, um, HubSpot, or any other systems that, that you need to, to integrate. There's a lot of uh, potential there, so there's a, there's a lot of support already built. I think we just uh, need to um, um, get your specific requirements and understand what you want to do. And I think we can definitely work on it. But of course, uh, our uh, offerings, I think, are, are, are pretty extended. So you can definitely reach out to us if you have um, um, a quite, uh, let's say, custom system or a very peculiar one, because we, can, we, can tr we, we will do our best to, to help you with that. And of course, um, when it comes to um, uh, to our platform, so it's an IPaaS, right? There's no staging of your data. It is very easy to be set up and configured, and there's no programming required. So here, this is a very important 
part <laughs> because you don't need to be a developer or a, a, um, a person with a, you know, a lot of technical expertise in order to work on this integration. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can definitely work on it without prior experience. So you don't need to go through a learning curve and try to understand how it works. And then we connect multiple systems and companies. So we can do that if you have, let's say, five companies in your ERP uh, system, then we can connect all of them and make sure that data is being transferred correctly. When it comes to data, we can transfer any data. It can be standard, it can be custom, anything that, that you have. So it, it, our, um, our uh, platform does not limit the type of data that you want to, to transfer. If you have standard data, perfect. But if you have a more custom process, then that's also something that, that can be uh, done. And then the last point is about the subscriptions that we have, which are all inclusive. So all inclusive means that you get everything from the from the very beginning until the end. So you you go through the integration uh, project, then you go live, and then in the end you get uh, you know lifetime support from us in case you have any issues or you need any help uh, maintaining your current integration. So these are just a few things um, um, that actually represent a Rapidi. But of course, I think the most important ones are that you don't need to have a uh, technical um, expertise. And of course, uh, the subscription that you have is complete. You don't need to worry about additional costs or anything after the project um, is live. Now we'll take a look a bit at the data flow, Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics 365. As I mentioned before, we do have a set of pre-configured templates that you can use when you start your integration project. But of course, you are not limited to those. You can use them as a starting point and then adjust them according to your needs. But when you have, but when you start using the um, uh, mapping templates, then you definitely um, you actually have more time for testing, and then you have more time to actually go through your use cases. As you, as you see here um, on the screen, so we're talking about, for example, accounts, which can be transferred to your ERP. We have contacts, uh, products, which would be um, also uh, synchronized prices, opportunities that would become orders in your ERP, um, orders, also any type of update can be made, uh, payments and sales history, which would be invoices and credit notes. Of course, these are the, um, the standard um, objects, so to speak, that are part of the mapping templates, but you can also map any type of object that you have. For example, if you have custom objects that you are using in your Salesforce instance, you can definitely use those um, for this integration. So this is an example of um, code to cash um, a scenario, right? So in Salesforce, you have a lead, uh, the lead is converted, and then you have account and contact. When you have that in Salesforce, you can go ahead and transfer them into your ERP. In your ERP, a contact would be a customer and a contact would be a contact. So then you can have this information being sent uh, both ways. So if, if uh, Salesforce is the place where you create your account and contact, then you can do so and then transfer everything to your ERP. And the information can be updated both ways. Of course, then if you have an opportunity in Salesforce, you can transfer that as a sales order, right? So that goes into your ERP as a sales order. And then you can also um, update um, the sales order and send them back as open sales order in Salesforce. So as you can see, you can go both ways and any type of information or data can be updated. Um, I think, I mean, the type of data that you need to update actually is linked to your business process. So based on what you currently have and how the information sh should flow, then you can decide uh, where it needs to go and what it needs to update. And of course, we also have here, we have payments, invoice, and credit notes. As you can see, they, um, they all go um, back to Salesforce. And of course, there are also products. If you have products in, in Salesforce um, and items in your ERP, you can also synchronize them and make sure that you have all your items up to date, price books um, in Salesforce would be prices in your ERP or any other custom table in your ERP or custom object in your Salesforce uh, environment can be synchronized. I think this is just a standard example of how it works, but of course it doesn't mean that it applies to your current process right now. If you have a very specific uh, business process, then you can adapt that um, 
and then you can have an integration that reflects completely um, the, the current way of doing things. Then we have um, Rapidis key functionalities. So here we have a few things on the list. We have data mapping and transformation. We have real-time synchronization, customization, scalability, automated workflows, security measures, and monitoring and analytics. Let's take a look at them one by one. So first one would be data mapping and transformation. So when it comes to Rapidi, we are able to map and transform uh, any data without uh, you know, uh, any major effort. So that can happen between um, dynamic CRPs and Salesforce. And this can happen via, uh, via the pre-built mapping templates. But of course, this doesn't mean that you have to use them no matter what. <laughs> so if you have a very specific process and you say, oh, this doesn't fit uh, what we actually do right now, then you can definitely um, just have separate um, data flows that would uh, do what, the, what they are supposed to do. And of course, we offer support for custom data fields. So um, sometimes we, um, for example, we need to have custom fields either in the ERP or in uh, in Salesforce. So we, we support that. So um, the only thing that we need for that is to have access to those specific fields and make sure that we can read them. But other than that, anyone can uh, can use any type of custom fields. And of course, we do offer an intuitive data mapping interface. So you can customize your current data flows. This means that if you, uh, you've you worked on an integration and then after a specific time, you think that you need to adjust it because things, things have changed, then you can do so. You can go into your account, uh, into your uh, transfers and customize your current data flows and make sure that um, they will work according to your needs. So there's always this flexibility around it. So you can um, also uh, customize or even extend uh, your current uh, integration, so to speak. So if you want to add more to it, you can do that and have everything um, in one place, basically. Then we have uh, real-time synchronization. So I think this is really important uh, because we, we really want to have information up to date in all systems, right? So what you have in your ERP, you also want to have in your Salesforce instance. And when you have users doing all this work, then it becomes a tedious task and it takes time. So when systems uh, talk to each other, then you will have that. The information will be always up to date in both systems. So this is something that will happen instantly and without any type of uh, human intervention. You'll have immediate updates on leads, opportunities, or customers, or, or anything that's a part of the integration. And what this gives you is um, you'll get uh, a minimum of data latency, and then you also get improved decision making. So it helps you to um, have you know everything in both systems, and also it helps you to focus on other priorities within the company. Next point would be uh, customization and scalability. Of course, um, when we work on an, on an integration, we do adapt to unique business processes and structures um, because businesses are different. Uh, you can be in a, in, a, in a specific industry, so then you have specific needs. And of course, um, based on your requirements, we can make sure that the integration will fit your business uh, process. And of course, we do ensure scalability. Um, for um, all businesses of all sizes. We can talk about very small um, companies or um, let's say corporations. It doesn't, um, we, we ensure that um, for um, all of them. So if you're a very small company, you have a specific process, we adapt uh, the integration to that. So then you get value out of it. And the same thing happens for large corporations. If you have a more complex process and it's more customized, then again, we can do the same. And of course, we do provide, like I said, customization based on industry specific needs. Um, of course, um, every in industry is different. So then you'll have different requirements. So you, um, you will then expect a certain level of customization. And that can happen without any issues. We can do that and ensure that you have everything that you need. Next one would be um, automated workflow. So um, here, we do ensure 
And of course, yeah, we, we do ensure um, um, uh, the streamlining of business processes. Of course, when you have an integration um, between two systems, um, then everything is automated, right? So then data will be transferred from one point to another and you don't need to worry or think about it. So that's something that the, um, the integration will do for you. And then of course, uh, all those repetitive tasks um, that someone used to do them, right? Those are automated. So you don't really need to wait for a specific user or for a team to take care of those repetitive tasks or manual tasks um, uh, before you actually che check a status on a specific customer. So those will be completely removed um, and then the manual effort can be reduced if not eliminated and then you minimize errors. Because like I said, when users do a lot of manual work, then you should expect errors. It's, it's normal to, to see those. But when you have only um, uh, systems involved that do everything, then those errors are minimized, if not eliminated. And of course, the flexibility to customize your data. So this is something really important because all businesses are different. So you can uh, customize it. So then um, everything will match your business requirements. And then you can ensure that the, int the integration will work as you expect it to. Next point is about security measures. And of course, we are committed to data security and we want to make sure that you are comfortable with when it comes to the safety of your sensitive business data. So we want to make sure that all the users are comfortable with that and that they, they are confident that um, uh, their data is not uh, endangered in any way. So we always focus on, on um, security compliance um, uh, via encryption protocols, access controls, and any other security uh, features. So you don't need to worry about this part because um, we got you covered, so to speak. <laughs> So then the last point would be monitoring and analytics. This is really interesting because we do offer monitoring and analytics tools. So this will allow you to track the integration performance. Uh, what this will give you, so this will actually give you insight into data flows. Um, it will give you insight into the performance of certain data flows and your overall uh, integration. And you can identify bottlenecks. You can identify recurrent um, issues um, or patterns that can happen. And also um, it will allow you to um, um, be able to optimize your processes via those statistics. So, it, um, so this um, so this tools will give you a better understanding of how everything is performing, but also it will give you a, de a, de a more detailed, so to speak, insight into what's happening there. So if you notice any anything, any performance issues with your data flows, you can um, look at patterns, see what happened and try to optimize that. I think this is a really, uh, this would be a really good tool for those customers that uh, are transferring a lot of data and they have a really high volume. So then you can really see how everything is, you know, is performing. This is something available to customers um, uh, once they are using Rapidi and they, ha they have everything, uh, you know, transferred from one system to another. Then the next part is um, a very um, short <laughs> sneak peek into other Rapidi, uh, Rapidi functionalities, just a couple of them. Um, I just um, chose a few so then you can see um, how um, everything works. First one is data flow actions. On any data flow, you, uh, you will want to perform specific actions. You can say, I want to create accounts, I want to update accounts, I want to delete them. So what, what you see there on the screen, those are the actions that can be performed. So when you work on an integration, you can think about uh, the action itself and say, I want to create and update accounts in Salesforce. And then the data flow will do that for you. Or for example, you also want to use um, the last on the list, which is continue on error in combination with add and update, let's say. Uh, you can also use combinations, not just one. But for example, if you use, if you want to use the last action, which is continue on error, this is something that can be used if you're dealing with bad data in your system. And what will happen uh, when the transfer or the data flow is running, the bad records will be skipped and the good ones will go into Salesforce. So the ones that are, are being skipped will be moved into a different section uh, for you to review. And then the, the correct records will be transferred to Salesforce. This is a way to transfer 
your data, even though uh, you are dealing with um, some uh, bad records. Of course, there are customers who are using continue on error uh, because they are aware of the bad data they have in their systems and they are working on cleaning up everything, right? So this is just, let's say, temporary. And this, of course, this is a, um, let's say, a great option because then you can still get to have your data into Salesforce, but um, of course, you still have to do the cleanup and, and make sure that everything is, is correct. So this is an option that can be also used by anyone who, who really wants to have data into Salesforce, even though there are some, um, you know, some uh, data issues in the uh, ERP system. The next one would be link storages. So link storages, um, think about them as dynamic lookup tables. So here you can store your company data within Rapidi. Um, so what happens is that at runtime, all records will be added um, in this table, right? So let's say that you want to transfer uh, customers from your ERP into accounts in Salesforce. Uh, once the transfer is running, then uh, this table will be automatically populated with those uh, main keys from both systems. As you know, in your ERP system, you have a, a unique customer number, right? And in Salesforce, you have the same. So those would be the unique identifiers or keys for those customers. So you'll see on the left, you see the ERP uh, customer number. On the right, you see the Salesforce ID of that account. So every time the transfer will run, every time that you, know, you are transferring customers from your ERP to Salesforce, this list would, will be updated. So it's not a static lookup table, like those lookup tables that you have to build by yourself. These are dynamic in the sense that they are being updated automatically uh, when the transfer is running. I think it's important to mention that because there are a lot of situations where you do have lookup tables available, but they are static. Like you have to build them and you have to maintain it yourself. That's not the case. Here, the system does everything for you, will actually update the table. And then if you're transferring thousands of accounts, that's really not a problem. There's really no limitation with regards to the total number of customers that you can transfer. So this is something really interesting that can be used and it, it is being used by a lot of customers because you have here, uh, um, let's say, an accurate list of all the customers that have been transferred from one place to another. And then you can actually use it as a lookup on other transfers, right? If you want to transfer invoices or orders. So I think it very much depends on what you want to do. But of course, um, um, Regardless of the purpose of the integration, the link storage is definitely a really good functionality that can be used by uh, most of our uh, customers. And then next one, this one is about tags. So tags is also very interesting because um, tags are actually parameters or variables that you can set up at the connection or data flow level. And it can have a lot of purposes, <laughs> but I think the, um, the most, uh, the most common one is to transfer data to several different destinations via master uh, data flow. So what will happen is that you will have a main uh, data flow or transfer. Let's say you transfer customers, but then you want to transfer customers for um, five different companies, right? Because in your ERP, you have five different companies and you want to send all those customers for all those companies into Salesforce. So you can do that via this functionality, which is called tags. You will use a main transfer, which would be for customers. But within that, you have a tag defined for every company that you have in your ERP. And at runtime, you will uh, be able to transfer the customers that belong to each company. So it's a really cool functionality because it keeps everything organized. It keeps everything into one place. So you don't need to um, have uh, separate transfers or have to um, uh, do it yourself. So just by um, having this configuration done from the very beginning, then you can use it for all your companies, whether you have five, 10 or 20, it doesn't really matter. You can use it and it will be very easy for you to maintain and uh, monitor your integration. And then of course, just to summarize what we just went through, um, Rapidi in a nutshell. So 
We do offer Microsoft um, um, ERPs and Salesforce integration, but our work is not limited to that. We can also work on integrations between, let's say, Business Central and Microsoft Sales. So those that are within the Microsoft ecosystem. And what we offer is a cost effective uh, in a very scalable business model. And uh, one really good point is that the data integration via Rapidi is possible for both cloud and on-premise systems. So whether you have a very old version or a very new version of your ERP, we can work with, with both. We are able to, um, to connect to any of them. We provide uh, robust development tools. And um, as I went through earlier, we have pre-built mapping templates. It can be used at any time by any customer. And two uh, important things is that um, everything is approachable for non-IT users. You don't need development or technical expertise. You should be fine without any type of technical background. And of course, another one that's important, you can manage it without IT resources, post go live. You don't need to go and find resources that can do that. You can do it yourself and you will be able to maintain everything correctly. And now I think that was it from my side for now. Sirin, back to you. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, so just to summarize a little bit, uh, what we are offering you in Rapidi is an all-inclusive investment model. So what does it mean? This means that our integration platform offers integration configuration, advanced data toolbox, you can have access to login notification, monitoring, and also Rapidi connector. Then we also offer integration templates that uh, include complete business process, pre-configured, it's uh, offering the best practices, customizable, and we have detailed documentation. We are also offering ongoing support because uh, we are here to maintain integration. You can add fields to existing transfer and integration advisory and also resolve uh, data errors. So we are offering a partnership that goes beyond integration. Uh, it's a commitment for sustained success and it's also a commitment to be alongside the customers every step of the way. Uh, so we'll go to next topic, which is our customer testimonial. And we are proud to announce that Rapidi has achieved uh, an exceptional five stars average in both of uh, Salesforce App Exchange for overall experience and also for support uh, over the last years. So we have the privilege to serve satisfied customers worldwide through various industries. And today I would like to spotlight one of our customer uh, success stories, which is the very quest case story. So I want to tell you a little bit about this company. So VeryQuest Visual Learning Tools, it's a major US wholesaler. They are specializing in school printers and also related school uh, equipment. And we have the testimony of Tom Helbeck, who is the director of operations uh, at Veritronics. Uh, so Tom Halbach uh, said, if you check the quote that we have here, that it was one of the best implementation experience that uh, they faced uh, over 20 years that he had. And uh, also he highlighted the fact how we improved reporting capabilities for the management of their team. So I would like to tell you a little bit more about the need that they have. So uh, this company faced challenges that require innovative solution integration. They need to integrate Salesforce CRM and Microsoft Dynamic 365 BC ERP. So uh, back then these two systems didn't talk to each other. So they needed to do manual data entry, uh, importing and exporting data. And of course, this will lead to a lot of errors and a waste of time. And uh, this is where Rapidi could uh, help them and lead it to their success because we think that our customer success is our success. And now I would like to tell you a little bit how you can get started with us. So it's very easy. You only need to go to our website and fill in uh, our uh, contact form with the, your project details. And of course, we'll reach out and uh, offer you a uh, a call with us so that we can discuss the project. So what happens then? 
I would like to explain a little bit how we work because we work with this five phase approach uh, when we have a project. So of course we start with the discovery. It's the integration project scope to uh, have the validation and project kickoff. Then we would go to the onboarding. It's uh, basically onboarding you into our Rapidity platform and we work on Basecamp for the online uh, collaboration. Then we would go to configuration, which is integration configuration uh, on our Rapidity platform and of course in user testing. And uh, then we go to deploy to production, which is basically initial data synchronization, upload of historical data and uh, actual cutover to the production environment. And finally, we'll go to transition to support, which is the post go live support. It's the project closure and transition to operational support. And uh, we basically work uh, with these steps because we want to ensure a smooth and successful integration. And then that we covered our agenda, it's time uh, for your questions. So if you have any questions, feel free uh, to write them in the chat. And if not, we prepared some of relevant questions that Andrea will uh, help to answer. So let's go to the first question. So Andrea, how to set up the data integration project in three steps? Um, okay, so here, um... Point number one is to have your scope confirmed for this integration, right? So you have to make sure that you know what you want to integrate um, and what would actually need to happen, right? So if we say, I want to work on integration and want to make sure that customers and sales orders are synced between the systems, right? So this is something that you would have confirmed and then you would know for sure um, what would need to happen. So that's one. Um, and then two, you will need to, uh, to of course, um, um, be able to connect your systems directly from our platform. Of course, it's not something that you will do by yourself. <laughs> we do offer uh, um, support on that. So we work on it together, but it's important to be able to um, have the right access to your systems, right? Because um, let's say, for example, if you don't get the right access, then you are not, you are not able to um, get to see the information that you need. So being able to connect and having the right access would be step number two. And then, of course, um, testing and make sure that your systems uh, talk to each other. So um, the last step would be to um, be able to test and be able to transfer data back and forth and make sure that we can send uh, data from your ERP to Salesforce, for example, and also can we can send it backwards. So um, um, it's something that's really important because this, this will mean that um, uh, everything is working as expected and your systems um, you know, will allow us to um, um, build this integration entirely. So this would be the steps, <laughs> more or less. Thank you. Okay, I'll go to next question then. So how to ensure the best data mapping? Okay, so here I think it's really important to know your data. So it's really important to know what you have in both systems. So here I'm referring to uh, any restrictions, uh, anything that has an impact on your data and anything that's related to the way your data is being managed right now, right? Because as you all know in Salesforce, it's very easy to restrict everything there. So you, it's easy to, to customize, it's easy to have custom objects, it's easy to do everything basically. In your ERP, it's not that easy usually. So um, sometimes uh, you can be on the other side of the conversation when there's really no restriction. <laughs> so you have no restriction and too many restrictions in Salesforce. So uh, they're a bit, right? And they're not on the same page. Um, so you have to make sure that uh, they align um, at a certain level and that what you have in your ERP, the way it's being, um, um, let's say, uh, built, it, it will also reflect in your Salesforce environment. And I'm saying this because when you have an integration between one ERP and Salesforce, you send data from, uh, let's say, Business Central to Salesforce. And if there are different validations um, uh, in those systems, then you will get uh, quite a few errors on that. So it's important to know how the data is being managed and um, you know how much you want it to be restricted. And if you want it to be restricted, then you can work on that. And then you can uh, work on the integration and you can transfer uh, data. But if there is a big discrepancy between systems in, 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 in that sense, then it will be difficult to transfer data without um, running into issues. 
Thank you, Andrea. I see we have a question through the chat, so I will share. Oh, do I have to install objects in now to oh 18th? Um, no, so you really don't. <laughs> you don't really have to do that. We, when it comes to a vision, we work with the available uh, tables. So let's say if you have customers uh, invoices or you know um, ledger entries or anything like that, we will work with those and then transfer the data into your destination system. Of course, there are customers that are using the vision, either this version or other versions, and they decide to have custom objects. But again, that's something that they want to do. It's not something that we require. So the short answer is no. <laughs> but the explanation to it is that um, I think um, with Navision, it's pretty straightforward. It's just using what you have in your system and um, sending that over to Salesforce. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, I will carry on with our question as these are the most common questions that we receive. And I'm checking the chat, so don't hesitate to write any question that you have. Okay, so why it's best to be prepared when handling errors? Yeah, so I think this when it comes to errors, uh, we are all in general a bit afraid of errors because, you know, errors are not good. We don't like them. Uh, but it's good to get prepared for them from the very beginning um, because you never know. Once the project goes live, then you can, you know, maybe everything will run without any issues or maybe you'll have errors. You never know <laughs> uh, because data can change in time. So it's not something that you can control. Um, the idea is that when you start the integration project, uh, you can start um, also focusing on this part and make sure that you you uh, you are testing your use cases. And while doing that, also um, uh, check the error messages and, and understand them. Of course, on any project, uh, when we are running testing, we do go through errors and explain what they mean, what is being required. So you get all the support you need for that. You just have to maintain that once you go live. But I think uh, the, the best way to, under, to, to actually uh, handle errors and understand them and be comfortable with them is to run a lot of tests, make sure you go through all your scenarios, then review the errors, um, make sure you understand them. And then once you go live, you will be um, good to go. You'll be comfortable with dealing with that and you will know what the problem is, right? Because usually it's a it's a data issue so i think 90 percent those are data issues just because data is being sent from navision to salesforce and in a vision you have a specific you know a specific list of required fields but then in salesforce you have something completely different so this can actually uh, cause uh, errors so those are just errors that you can have and that require you to um, fix certain records in your source system Thank you, Andrea. I see we have another question, so I'm going to share. So if, okay, two-way synchronization between Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics. Okay, let me go to the chat so I see it. Yeah, they're basically asking if we set up a two-way synchronization between Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics, how can we prevent loops in the synchronization process? So, um, okay, so when it comes to um, transfers in general and their schedules, then what happens is that, okay, let's just take an example. So let's say we have customers between Dynamics and Salesforce. So that would be a, a two-way synchronization. We, we, we have that. So then when you have that in place, then you can schedule them to run at a specific time. So you can say, um, schedule number one would be customers from um, um, Dynamics to Salesforce, right? So that would be the first one that you wanted to run because your main source would be your ERP. And then you can say, oh, okay, I also um, want to send everything um, the other way, right? From Salesforce to, to your ERP. You can also do that and have it as schedule number two, so to speak. So you send that over. Of course, uh, here it's... Um, you, you do have to um, to have in place certain um, configurations in terms of mappings to make sure that you prevent those loops or to prevent any um, duplicates or any issues in your systems. But again, running on a schedule for when it comes to uh, two-way synchronizations, that's the best way to do it because then you can prevent any issues and the data will, will, will be transferred correctly. 
most customers just um, do it one way because it's easier to maintain the information, but there are also customers who do it both ways because, um, I don't know, maybe they create customers in their ERP, but they also do it in Salesforce. So somehow they need to, uh, to keep everything up to date. So then they do have uh, separate schedules and they, they, they run uh, sequentially, right? This is how you should run them. So you avoid that. Okay, let's see. Um, I think we have another one, another question. Another question. So, hey, in a couple of sentences, how this seemingly out of the box integration setup process differ if we have custom, custom situation? So on Salesforce side, is there cloud sense solution and on Dynamics 365 FNO, there is heavily customized solution with an ordering model. So what would you need on Salesforce side? Any development? And some question for uh, D365 if you know what is required for compiling with customized sales process. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, th so this is a very, very good uh, <laughs> question. So I think, um, yeah, so when it comes to, so there are two things. So you have the standard integration, right? Where you have the standard templates, let's say uh, FNO, right? and then Salesforce. But you also have um, the custom side of things. Like in your case, if you have um, the FNO, which, which is highly customized, then you would just need to identify, okay, which are the custom tables that you need to integrate? Let's say custom table number one that you have in FNO, this would actually contain, let's say customers, right? And you want to send that over to Salesforce. But in Salesforce, you have the cloud sense solution, right? So this is where everything happens. The idea is that in Salesforce, as long as it's in Salesforce, in their environment, right? In their ecosystem, so to speak, we can connect to that. Um, we've had other examples with clients that would have a more of a solution on top of Salesforce, and we were able to connect um, to, their, to their environment and be able to read everything from there. So all the custom, all the custom objects and everything that they have. So in your case, what um so the only difference that um we would have here would be the number of hours that a consultant would spend on integrating your um systems because it's custom and you you would need to know exactly what you want to integrate how you know uh, how custom that is and how many transfers and you know and, and then the mapping how complex it needs to be it's just a matter of hours and how much time we need to spend on it it's not a matter of oh can you support something that's heavily customized right that's not a case because we can we can um, actually read from any uh, table whether it's fno or what i don't know like other uh, erp um, and the same applies to Salesforce. If you have it in the Salesforce ecosystems, then we can read from it. We can um, 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 actually get the information, update any any records that you might have there. So yeah, so if you were to think about this as a project, then as Serene mentioned earlier, you would meet with Serene and one of our colleagues, go through your scope and understand exactly which is your scope, um, how customized the mapping needs to be, right and then we estimate how many hours are required so i think that's the only part of things everything else um will be done by the team uh during the implementation project thank you andrea okay so which systems does rapidi support yeah so i think uh we had a um a nice uh, slide initially so we do focus on dynamics erps and salesforce integrations but we can also work with other systems um and it can be anything it can be um, um sql databases uh, oracle and hubspot or other you know anything that you might have and i i think it's just um if you have a very specific system or, or something that's not very common, for example, then you can say, okay, I have this intention to integrate the systems. We can evaluate uh, what you want to do, and then we can provide you with um, our uh, recommendation, how we would do that and, and, and which would be the next steps. But I think uh, Rapidi can do definitely much more than that. We can definitely um, work on integrations that are not part of our standard let's say um uh, scope okay awesome so uh do you support custom objects 
Yes. So um, this is linked to the uh, the last question. So uh, we do support any type of um, object. It doesn't really matter if it's uh, extremely customized or it's something very specific to your business. We do support it as long as we get the right access to your um, ERP uh, environment. Then. We, we should be able to read it and be able to use it on our mappings. Um, and the same happens for Salesforce. As long as um, your solution or everything that you have um, built within the Salesforce um, ecosystem, then we can connect to that. We just need to make sure that we have um, the specific access for that, read all the objects and the fields that are associated with them, and then you're good to go. And then I think this also is linked to, you know, if it's too customized or if it's extremely customized, um, uh, what do we do? It's the same conversation because it doesn't, you can have it extremely customized. You can have something that's just specific to you. But for us, it, it doesn't make any difference because as long as we can read uh, from your ERP and from your Salesforce instance, we can work on that. It's just a matter of how much time we need to spend on it. That was pretty well explained, Andrea. Thank you. And why should we choose Rapidi integration platform instead of building integration by ourselves? Yeah, so I think um, even though you, you come with a, with a list and say you should not build it by yourself, right? I think in the end, it, it's um, every person's choice, like what do you want to do? But I think when it comes to uh, building something by yourself, um, this requires uh, time, money, um, effort, and of course, um, resources. So specialized resources that can actually build that. And when you're building something by yourself, then you are like in a sort of a discovery, <laughs> like, a, you know, this journey, trying to see how it would work, because you cannot know for sure if things will go smooth or if you'll have a lot of um, um, bottlenecks along the way. So it's a discovery uh, thing. So it will take it can take months or years. It very much depends on what you have available in your company. On the other side, in our case, we have our product, which is ready, which can be used, and it gives you everything that you need. It was built to actually do that. So it's something that you can use right away. And I think the good part also is that you don't need to be technical. Because if you were to say, we have our platform, but you need to have some expertise, you need to have some uh, technical background, then you would be, oh, I don't know, uh, it's not something that I, I want to do, right? But it's not the case because you use the the the, the platform as it is. Um, you just you, you can be any end user and then go ahead and manage your integration. And then you have to think about it. Oh, but then once the integration is live, you don't really need um, IT resources to mm -hmm. deal with maintenance. You just uh, do it yourself. And only if you run into major issues, you can say, okay, I will reach out to you guys because I don't know what to do. But usually most of our clients, they just maintain everything by themselves. So I think you have pros and cons here, but you know, in the end, you decide what to do based on what you, what you have available. Thank you. And last question is, why should we choose Rapidia integration platform instead of using other standard integration tools? So here, um, one point would be the fact that these subscriptions are all inclusive. And I think this is very important to be mentioned uh, because within the subscription, so you get, you go through your integration project, you finish that, you go live, but you also get support afterwards. And I think support is um, really, it's not, it doesn't get the importance that it needs, <laughs> honestly, because once the project is live and you're up and running in the production environment, you can still run into issues. You might still need um, support from, uh, from us from time to time. So you need to have it available. In our case, this is something that we offer. Um, so that's also included there. You get support from us at all times. Uh, then when it comes to other uh, other uh, standard integration tools, um, you'll see that in certain situations, support is not included. Support will come, you can get support, but that's an extra cost that um, you'll have to take into account. So whenever, whenever a company wants to choose um, an integration tool, 
um, that company will have to make sure that support is also included because that's not by default. Uh, even though we think that it might be, it's not. So um, usually it's not part of the contract that you have. And then if you really want it, then you have to pay extra for it, right? And then the second point is about um, if we talk about standard integrations, right? Um, in this case, our standard integrations are available, can be used, but you can customize them. It doesn't mean that you have to use them as they are. You cannot change anything. You have to keep it as it is. No, you get those as a starting point. And then from that point on, you can decide whether to keep it as it is or just change it, update it, and make sure that it fits, right? Uh, whereas the um, other standard integration tools, if you get this integration package, um, so to speak, then you get a specific, um, let's say, set of tables or objects and a specific set of fields. It's not really, there's no place for custom fields or for custom objects. That's more, so if you were to say, okay, I have a fully standard integration, then that's fine, you can do it. But then if you have some customizations that need to be done, then you have to uh, think about it. Okay, how am I going to do it? Because that can be an extra cost. So you really have to be careful and have to think about your business process and how standard that is, right? If it's not standard, you really have to, to know, are you going to be charged for extra object, extra fields, or extra customization, right? So these are, I would say, the main two points when it comes to Rapidi versus the other integration tools. The list can, we can, we can continue having this uh, conversation, but at the end of the day, I think it's important to make to take into account everything, right? Make sure that you have transparency over the implementation costs, transparency over the support, whether you have it or not, and then transparency over, you know, how how much you can customize your integration, and if so, do you will you be charged for it, right? So it's really important to know that, and um, yeah, that's something that. At Rapidi, at least, we, we give you upfront. So we tell you exactly how much everything will cost. That you will not have any type of extra charges or hidden costs that come up during the project. It's something that you get from the very beginning based on estimations. So you will know for sure this is what I have to, to pay, and that is it, nothing more. Thank you very much, Andrea. So uh, as we wrap up today's webinar, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining, for watching us and for participating also. I would like to invite you to visit our website where you will find uh, detailed solution overviews, compelling case stories, informative fact sheets, and of course, comprehensive documentation. I also invite you to follow us on our uh, social media channels. And shortly after this webinar, you will receive an email where you will find this presentation, the case story that we shared, and also a link to give us feedback. Uh, we will also share the link through the chat. So we would really appreciate to have your feedback so that we can improve the webinars. If you have any suggestion about any topic, also feel free to communicate it to us. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.